it had been a big leap for us. Mm -hmm. We're both pretty career oriented and we had also waited out the worst part of the pandemic and everybody hopes that it will be easy. And we were really lucky that time that it was easy. And then we, you know, found out the gender and that was, I think, a really touching moment for both of us yeah. to know we're going to have a little girl. Yeah. Chris grew up with a whole bunch of brothers. So, um, it was really exciting and different for him to imagine having a girl. We had just moved into this house not long before we got pregnant, so we were also just getting settled in. We were just trying to make everything perfect for her to come into the world and have it all set up so we could just enjoy our time with her. And I remember this moment where the doctor's face looked suddenly very focused and looking up at the screen and then looking at the nurse and then all of a sudden the doctor making an instant decision that she needed to perform a partial episiotomy to get somewhere out. I remember when she came out, she looked a little gray and I remember this like this thud, this like noise of, of our child hitting your chest. Yeah, I put her on my chest for a split second and we both knew something was really wrong. I remember Chris holding my hand and I kept looking at him and asking him, is she okay? And I kept looking at the doctor and asking, is she gonna be okay? The hospital chaplain came out and asked us if there was anything that we wanted her to say to Summer. And then the NICU doctor came out and told us that we needed to make some hard decisions. The thing they said will, I think, always sit with me for forever, which was at some point, you're no longer preserving life, you're delaying death. It wasn't until we made that statement that we really realized where we were. We looked at the chaplain and said, what do we do? And she said, I think you should go and hold Summer's hand and I think you'll know. And so we held her little hand. It was still kind of warm and but so frail. And um, we knew it was over. And so we, we told him just that we wanted to wrap her up in a blanket and just hold her you know, and just, just be with her and, and just feel her presence. I think we, we often think back and what I would give for another minute and another second just to hold her. We were expecting to come home and have our hands full with a child and we came home to a really different kind of new situation to handle figuring out how to live with really intense grief and figuring out what to do to memorialize Summer and make sure that we laid her to rest in a way that we'd feel good about as her parents. And so it was a way for everyone to come together to recognize that Summer was real, that everyone loved her and had a chance to love her. And so I think that moment of just sitting out in our front lawn, everyone having candles, and there was, um, was this feeling of connection. We had this vision for our daughter that was this woman of the future, someone who was a scientist, an engineer, you know, someone who was a, a powerful business person tackling the issues of the 21st century. But we don't get to have that. And I might say the world doesn't get to get the benefits that we had hoped she could provide. We were excited about the Innovation Fund because we didn't know exactly what happened to Summer. And we spent months looking at research online and trying to understand exactly what could we invest our time and energy in that would be a way to help other families not have to experience what we had been through? And so our hope is with the, the Innovation Fund that they can take this concept of summer and some of the gifts that she could have given to the world and just project it into um, other families and other, other moms and babies. And we really wanted to be able to have a legacy for summer. Yeah.